We are in this year of St. Francis D. Sales. And we have for our theme this month, Every Day with God. We have been familiarizing ourselves with the introduction to devout life. In August, we reflected on devotion, which is the habit of doing what is good in the eyes of God with as much passion as possible. In September, we reflected on prayer. Most of us will not win heaven through heroic feats of sanctity. We will win heaven by learning to live the devout life through our everyday activities. In the words of Pope Benedict XVI, St. Francis de Sales presents the devout life as an everyday approach to holiness that enables us to be who we are and to be that well. St. Francis de Sales has already developed for you a plan of action, a plan that has been championed by church leaders for centuries because it doesn't require you to set aside the normal routine of your daily life in order to pursue supernatural growth. The gospel tells us all this took place to fulfill what the Lord God said through the prophet. The virgin shall be with child and give birth to a son. And they will call him Emmanuel, a name which means God with us. Emmanuel, God with us. A God who is always with us. A God who is with us always. Yet, why is it? that God sometimes seems to be distant, so elusive, so remote. Does God forget us? No, God can never forget us. However, we can forget God, and we frequently do. Salation spirituality offers a practical approach for recalling God's presence throughout the day. Rather than look for a God who dwells in a far away place, this spiritual recollection tells us that God dwells precisely where we find ourselves in the rhythm of each day. In order to sanctify the ordinary events of life, St. Francis de Sales suggests making use of a variety of prayerful aspirations while carrying out each day of our daily actions. What are these aspirations? Aspirations are biblical or other verbal expressions that convey short, ardent movement of the heart towards God. And the purpose of these prayers is to remind us of God's loving presence even in worldly matters and to arouse affection for God in all things. St. Francis de Sales considered it absolutely necessary to exercise holy thoughts as often as possible throughout the day. In each Every day spirituality, St. Francis de Sales counsels us to begin at the beginning. First, he says, upon waking up, embrace the gift of a new day, thanking God for having preserved you during the preceding night. We are encouraged to get into the habit of seeing the new day as a gift from God, a mini-resurrection. 
Thus, St. Francis' spiritual direction opens with this exhortation, which I quote, First of all, on awakening, we are to direct our minds completely to God by some holy thought, such as, Sleep is the image of death and awakening that of the resurrection. That we are alive for another day is a gift that each morning brings. Recognizing the source of that gift by directing our minds to do so in the appropriate response to such a gracious gift. It may take some practice but it will provide beneficially to make this the first thought of the day instead of being awakened, reacting with annoyance or reluctance at having been woken up. Consider that God gives you this new day to bring you one step closer to eternity before you intend to make good use of this new day. He says, as we begin to dress, we will make the sign of the cross and say, as all charismatics do, cover me, Lord, with the cloak of innocence and the robe of love. My God, do not let me appear before you stripped of good works. He continues to say, foresee what business, what affairs and what situations for serving God you will encounter this day. And he says, and to what temptations of offending God you will be exposed to. In other words, he says, plan your day. Anticipate the opportunities that you will have for accomplishing some good. Be aware of those circumstances in which you may be tempted to do otherwise. St. Francis de Sales says, direction of intention is the salation key to sanctifying our activities and unlocking the devout life. And in giving a quote, he says, if we wish to thrive and advance in the way of our Lord, we should at the beginning of our actions, both exterior and interior, ask for his grace and offer to his divine goodness all the good we will do. In this way, he says, we will be prepared to bear with peace and serenity all the pain and suffering we will encounter as coming from the Father's hand of our good God and Savior. Everything we do will be done in God's name to please Him alone. Putting it simply, before we do anything, we should pause and make an intentional threefold prayer. The first one, ask for God's grace. This spiritual plea gives us a sacramental view of the world by reorienting our thinking away from our self-centeredness towards God-centeredness. Offer. We offer to God the action we are about to do. This spiritual offering gives us a liturgical view of the world by providing spiritual value to all that we do. And thirdly, accept. We promise to accept whatever will happen in the process. This spiritual abandonment gives us a providential view of the world by believing that all we do, successful or not, and all that happens to us, happy or not, pertains to a divine design. On entering the place of work, St. Francis de Sales said, we should place ourselves in the presence of God, asking for His grace to make use of this time in accordance with the holy purpose 
for which it was instituted. When we begin our work, he says, we should say interiorly, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Oh my God, make me worthy to accomplish your holy will. And he continues to tell us that during the day, retire into the solitude of your heart while you are outwardly engaged in business or association with others. St. Francis de Sales says, in short, stay centered. Simple movements of the mind or heart in the midst of any activity will achieve this. Always remember to retire at various times into the solitude of your own heart. Even while outwardly engaged in discussions or transactions with others. This mental prayer, he says, cannot be violated by many people who surround you since they are not surrounding your heart but only around your body. Your heart remains alone in the presence of God. Indeed, our tasks are seldom so important so as to keep us from withdrawing our hearts from them from time to time in order to retire into this divine solitude. Next, Francis recommends that we engage in imaginative consideration. That is to imagine the reality of what we believe, that God is with us right now. He is said that this has an estimable efficacy to enlighten the mind and move the will, motivating us to live well right now while we work. Think about it. We are likely to speak differently. We picture Jesus standing beside us during a conversation. St. Francis de Sales counsels us to practice spiritual time management that is acknowledging the truth that we draw closer to death with each passing hour this is ultimately aimed at setting us free to live well during the time we have and he says we need to make a brief examination of conscience half the day to midday. Are you living out your resolution for living the day well? Ask for God's grace to continue your efforts. And he says, have you been less than successful so far? Ask for God's grace and make a new start. At the end of the day, he says, make a more detailed examination of conscience. Thank God for having preserved you during the day. Examine your actions and attitude. Give thanks to God for what was good. Ask for forgiveness for that which was sinful. And finally he says, ask God to protect you during the night, to give you a restful sleep and to help you embrace tomorrow with renewed enthusiasm and zeal. As practical and powerful as these practices are, you should not spend inordinate amount of time upon them. Rather, says St. Francis de Sales, they must be made briefly and frequently. Holiness does not develop in a vacuum or in isolation. Holiness encompasses our relationship and friendships. Within the family, for example, we are challenged to grow daily in the little virtues. As we perform our ordinary tasks, cleaning, cooking, helping with homework, planning a birthday party, celebrating an anniversary, with extraordinary love, we find God. By approaching the rhythms of each day with a prayerful outlook, and intention, our daily triumph and tragedies do not obscure 
the presence of god they are the very places where we encounter the divine all work and no play makes jack a dull boy not only might it make jack dull it might cripple his attempts to be happy healthy and even holy and make no mistake therefore growing in holiness is a serious business it requires hard work it requires discipline it requires self examination it requires a commitment as st francis de sales would say it requires devotion but salation spirituality also recognizes the value of relaxation of taking time out of catching your breath of making time for play in fact relaxation is not permissible it is necessary francis de sales claim it is actually a defect to be strict austere and unsociable that one neither permits oneself nor others any recreation time the introduction to devout life contains ample evidence of the gentleman saints appreciation of the important role that recreation plays in the pursuit of fully human god centered life he says from time to time we must recreate in mind and body francis de sales says to take the air to go for a walk to enjoy a friendly chat to play music or to sing or to hunt are such honest diversions that the only thing needed to utilize them well is simple prudence practices that can help us establish and maintain a balanced life get enough sleep eat right practice leisure pace yourself learn to laugh focus on values practice self appreciation be involved but not too involved have a support group escape on occasions be spontaneous avoid negativity establish good friendships of course there are also spiritual practices pray participate in the life of the church celebrate the sacraments read scripture and other material that nourishes the soul our lord jesus christ spent virtually his entire public ministry meeting the needs of others healing teaching feeding challenging forgiving in short working but the gospels that the documents church christ work ethic also clearly document those times when he withdrew from his activities to rest to renew to enjoy another's hospitality to spend time with friends all helpful in rededicating himself to doing the will of god there are plenty of ways to achieve a balance between work and play livelihood and leisure pray and play consider them in a personal prayerful manner in conclusion choose those consistent with the state and stage of life in which you find yourself at this time what works for others may not work for you realize that as your life changes so to your means for achieving this happy healthy and holy balance god brings each day each hour each moment to let your spirit soar to become more of the person who god calls you to be in the here and now in the present live jesus each day